city did a map that has really very little to it. All right. So we're going to tell it we want to bring in that did a map file, which is equivalent to a table of contents, a FrameMaker book file, or a survey project file. It's a list of all the component files that are in this document, in this deliverable. So we're going to create a um, zoo demo. A couple of things going on here. Uh, by default, the content files will be imported into a particular folder that Flare will then manage. There is an auto re-import before generate output, which would relink back to the existing data files. Uh, my experience with that is that it's a little bit sketchy. And you also have the preserve ID attributes for elements. Um, if you're doing certain kinds of linking, you may need this. But in general, you can probably leave the defaults here and just move on. It's going to run through. It sort of says, here are all your documents that we're importing. Um, just a couple of quick things to note here. Uh, this document has what's called a relationship table, a rel table, which gets mapped over to related topics. We have a bunch of content files. We have a table of contents, a CSS, some conditional settings, and a snippet. And we'll look at each one of these as, as we get in there. So we're going to accept this. And then you will remember not to immediately click Finish, because when you do, it gets very cranky. And it brings up a Flare project. So in my Flare project, I now have my animal nutrition and a number of component files that are in here, aardvark, baboon, crane, and dingo, and a couple and a sort of container topic. So what we have here then is that it did correctly bring in the map file, which is the list of all the stuff that's in there. One thing that it does not necessarily do correctly by default is a nested TOCs, nested data maps. And I do have an example of that, which I'll show you in a bit. In the resources, or sorry, in the project organizer, if we look under advanced, you will see down here what's called a, a rel table or a relationship table. If you open this up, this shows us a list of related topics. So in this particular document, we've said that aardvark, baboon, crane, and dingo are all related to each other. We're not going to see that directly in the HTML files. So when you look in the HTML files, we just sort of get the usual preview, which looks OK. But if we build this, and I should probably point out, this is a completely uncustomized, out-of-the-box build. So I haven't done anything to this. I haven't done any cleaning up. I haven't done any formatting. I haven't done anything to the output. So this is just vanilla what you get out of the box from Madcap. So it's going to generate. It will ask me if I want to view the generated output. It will pop it on my other screen, which is not so helpful. And then we can take a look in here and see that, for example, under aardvark, down at the bottom, we have related concepts, baboon, crane, and dingo. And the same thing is going to be true, for example, in baboon. So it has now mapped over the related topics, or the rel table that came from DITA, and produced related topics at the bottom of each of our um, online outputs. You'll notice that the um, headings here, silly aardvarks, ugly baboons, elegant cranes, and dirty dingoes, those do not, in fact, match the headings that are in the content files. So these just have the name of the animal. What's going on here is that the table of contents has a different set of headings than the other thing. So over here, under animal nutrition, we have the various uh, titles that have been put in. But those don't directly match the original title of that particular topic. If we go back and we take a look at this on the XML side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and we're going to open up the original DITA map file. So I'm going to be in Flare Demo, DITA, Source, Animal Nutrition. This is the original DITA map. And uh, this opens in this lovely little interface here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to a plain XML view of this map. 
And what you'll see in plain XML view is these topic refs. These are equivalent to the links that you get in your table of contents in Flare. So what's going on here is that we have an href to animal nutrition, in this case .xml. But importantly, we have a lock title, and then we have a nav title. The nav title is the alternate title that's displayed in the table of contents. And the lock title attribute, when set to yes, indicates that you should use the nav title instead of pulling the title from the topic. So Flare correctly picked up the nav title from the data map instead of using the title of the topic, which actually rather surprised me. So I was happy to see that. Now, the other thing is that down here in the data file, this lovely thing starting right here is the relationship table, rel table. And you can kind of see where the links are being built up here with these various XML files. If we look at this in a more normal view, minus all the tagging, then you can kind of see what's going on, aardvark, baboon, crane, dingo, but you actually don't have enough going on here to really figure out what's happening. A couple of other things that I noticed when this is brought in. So let me switch this back over to my tree view, which is really much handier. So here's my feeding the animals, and here are my aardvarks. In, uh, in uh, XMetal, which is what I'm looking at here, this is a just a vanilla sort of uh, view of it, sort of an editing view, and we can see what's going on. We can also look at the original XML source. But the important thing here, I think, is to note that we have a picture of an aardvark here which was built as a link. It's actually an HTTP link out directly out to Flickr. So if you look in here, you'll discover that there's an href, and it says HTTP, off we go to Flickr to retrieve that image. Now, the problem with this, or the issue with this, is that if you look at the same thing in Flare, if we go back over here, uh, whoops, sorry, still in the TOC. So back to content, and we go over to the aardvark page, um, we do not get a preview here because it is a non-local file. It did maintain the link, and you can see the link source there. So everything's fine. It's just that um, Flare is sort of refusing to preview it because it is not local. Um, that, to me, is it, it's not a, you know, a bug or a feature. It's just a limitation. And what I think is going on here is that the more XML-oriented tools tend to have what amounts to a web browser embedded. And what we're looking at here is more of an authoring environment. So it's just a difference in how those links are managed and at what point they are rendered and shown as, as a preview or not. OK, so um, here we are. And we've got some, some sort of different things going on here. I wanted to open up a couple of other files. We do have. Um, a table in here, and that does render, and it looks fine, and it was a table on the back end, so that worked out. Now, the other thing I wanted to take a look at was um, linking, and a couple of different kinds of linking that you can do. First of all, uh, Flare has a concept of snippets, and XML has a concept of, uh, or XML Dita has a concept of confs, which are sort of like snippets. You'll notice that in here, in my list of files, I do have an aardvark no feeding flare snippet. And if we open that up, we just have a little danger, do not feed animals, this, that, and the other thing. That snippet is used here in the aardvark file. 